All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the Misfit Nation. If you have not had the chance to check out our first book, 13 Step Guide to Success, it is available on Amazon in Kindle and paperback versions. If you're going through some hard times, you do not have to go through this alone. Phone a friend and chat it out. If you don't want to talk to a friend because you're embarrassed or, or for whatever reason, call the crisis hotline at 1-800-273-8255. If you're a veteran, press 1. Do not make a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Be sure to subscribe to our, our show on your favorite podcast apps. If you're a new guest, we appreciate you for joining us. And also download the Military Broadcast Radio app and follow our family of shows on there. And also go to the YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube channel, D underscore Misfit Nation. This will keep you up to date with the latest episodes of the Misfit Nation and also allow you to hear the amazing stories of our guests. Speaking of which, our next guest has traveled the world, meeting successful entrepreneurs. This has given him the insights and skills needed to become one of the youngest goal achievers you'll ever meet. At 25 years old, he has already become a best-selling author, a certified goal success coach, and is now helping business owners create creative guerrilla marketing campaigns that get, get shared, not scrolled. So without further ado, let's welcome Nathan Bynum to the Nesfit Nation. Welcome, Nathan. Thanks, Rick, and thank you for having me on here. I'm excited to be here. Awesome, man. So uh, tell us a little bit about, a bit about you from as far back as you want to go. I mean, 25 is not very far, so I mean, <laughs> you should have pretty, pretty clear memories right now at 25 years old. And that's, that's amazing, the goals that you've already achieved. I can, can't wait to see what you do in the next 25, 26 years of your life. So if you just want to share your story from how, how it started to where you are now. Yeah, I appreciate that. Well, like a lot of business owners, I was trying to kind of follow the ordinary path starting out whenever I like the regular marketing and the business strategies that I'd learned from like courses that I'd taken. And I wasn't really seeing that traction that I was promised whenever I was starting. And I realized that in other things in life, I usually do them differently and they usually have a better outcome whenever I do them that way. So I decided after a lot of trial and error to kind of implement that into my business. So I brainstormed for a few days on a way to grow the business largely and quickly that would also benefit the community. And that's how I came up with the Guinness World Record idea. And after talking to Tom Antion and him telling me how much I, or I told him how much I enjoyed the creative aspect, the creative process of figuring out that marketing, he pointed out that that could be a business in itself because whenever I was starting out, like I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I just knew I wanted to serve people in some capacity and have a business to be able to do that. So I realized that there's probably a lot of business owners that have creative desires out there but marketing agencies won't really help them express their business in like out of the box ways. So after a lot of like research and kind of doing that, I wound up pivoting my business to cater towards that. And that's kind of my story as far as it goes with my life and my business as far as back as that. Well, that's awesome. Isn't it? It says you you traveled the world. What was your favorite location that you were able to get to to uh, get in the ear of an entrepreneur? Probably um, the Czech Republic. There, it's beautiful there in Prague with like all the architecture and all the different things. Went to Slaw Square, and there's also a lot of like really cool people who like have entrepreneurial spirits. So maybe that's what kind of geared me towards that because. It was, uh, I was only a few months old when we moved over there. And so that's kind of where my first memories are from. So that's, that's my favorite place outside of the U.S. Outstanding. Was your family military or your dad had a job there or something? Uh, my dad's a missionary. Okay. So he was preaching over there. That's outstanding. That's a, that's a good way to see the world there and meet a lot of uh, interesting people. I'm sure you got to see all across the world. Uh, close I got to check was just right across the border in Germany. So. Oh, wow. Is that when you were serving in the military? 
uh, after I got out, I went there to uh, to do it for, for my job. I had a mission over there to train soldiers. So I was there for about, about a month. Very cool. I Appreciate got to see some. Service. No problem. I got to see some of the sites that all my friends got to see during their whole careers. I got to see over 30 days. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I was looking at your website and I, I seen that you can't help but see the picture of Tim Tebow on there. And it says he's your biggest fan. Uh, how did you two uh, link in with each other and how to? Is that relationship still going? So that's another one of those kind of doing things a little bit differently. Um, I went to Florida College, which is a small school in near Tampa for a few years. And we have a thing there every year called the Leadership Dinner. And they'll bring in different people from like different walks of life, usually like talking about how they developed their leadership skills, like Archie Manning and um, Steve Forbes and this past year was Tim Tebow and he had just like published a book and he was um, selling those there and he was signing them and before the speech there's always like a dinner and so we're all like sitting at our tables and he sits at the front table and there's no rules about not going up and talking to him before the food comes out. So I brought my book there and I had pre-signed it and I wrote to Tim Tebow, my biggest fan at 226, three, nobody comes close. And so I like gave that to him and I, we talked for a good while, probably like four or five minutes. And I was just like kind of telling him what I do and he was giving me advice and he, our relationship has not, um, gone on since then he did give me uh, contact information for his agent but still trying to get through there to <laughs> talk to him again but i know he has a lot of huge engagements and he's helped to a lot of communities so whatever he's doing is important yeah and i'm sure his schedule is a lot tighter than either of ours and oh, with yeah. the, the amount of people that want him to be part of their organizations or just to have him come in and speak to them with i mean the way he does things is, is amazing. And he's done a lot of great things through his life. So marketing is a, is a big thing for any business. And uh, I see all over yours, uh, the picture of the lemon and the blimp that's yellow in color. How does a, and a, how can you use a lemon and a slingshot to grow your business? So that kind of brings us back to the Guinness world record that I'm going to be doing in August. And back whenever I was just like following these courses, like step by step, like you do this, do this, do this, and wasn't seeing the traction. I um, read James Altridge's book, um, Skip the Line. That's one of my favorite books. And it was talking about doing a practice every day of just coming up with 10 creative ideas. And they're not all going to be home runs. And like most of them are not going to be. But after about three days, like of applying that to that, I thought that since the name of my business is Lemon Launch, I could do a Guinness World Record launching lemons. And the way that I could go about like monetizing that is I've, over the past year and a half, I've gained a lot of friends through different business things, through podcast guesting, through different things like LinkedIn, just like connecting with people and talking to them about different things. And so I've grown a good network of people who I enjoy what they do and I find a lot of value in what they do. And the way that this would benefit them is there's a landing page that you can sign up to watch the world record live. And the incentive for people to watch it, not just because it'd be neat to watch a world record with a slingshot and lemons, but I wanted to provide like entrepreneurial resources for people. And so in doing that, like giving away my courses for free and different books and different PDFs and other people have contributed to that too, because they see that need that we have, especially with the craziness, with the pandemic, with people getting laid off with all the like job insecurity with people wanting to make something grow. And a lot of, there's a lot of opportunity after 
like all this craziness that's going on in the world. People need entrepreneurs because they're problem solvers. And so to make that transition for them a lot easier, that's where all the free resources come in and the other people like they'll, they have that benefit of seeing their work help those people. And so the way that that is helping me in return is getting the email addresses from the people and I'm able to build that relationship with them, provide them this value and continue to grow. Because I think the major part of any business is the relationships. And so kind of getting your foot in the door that way, that is, I think that is a good way to do it. Finding that creative way. I think you're hundred percent right. Once you, when you're starting a business, most times it's your friends and family that help you and uh, get you notoriety and such like that. But it's those relationships that you build from those you didn't know before. And when you give them a product and it makes them happy or makes them successful, that gives you that outer circle of a, uh, of network that you need to grow and grow your business more. And I think that's hundred percent the way to, to move as far. And I think this is a very creative strategy that you're using and, uh, I can't wait to watch that uh, play out and, and see you get the Guinness Book World Records record for that one. Maybe hold that trophy high next to Tim, Tr- Tim Tebow's uh, Heisman there. <laughs> <laughs> it, like you, you also mentioned um, the pandemic and, and you, as you know, in the last few years, a lot of people went from the brick and mortar to an online niche, uh, some kind of business online. A lot of people are doing the same things online. How do those businesses try to get themselves to stand out when there's a crowd of everyone else doing the same thing now? Yeah, so that there's kind of a structure to all the madness of what guerrilla marketing is. And I didn't really know what that was until about four months ago. I started reading all the books that I could on it, listening to what few podcasts there are on the subject and breaking down like what made good campaigns work and so there what i kind of broke it down into is three main sections which are plot act and direct and plot is broken down first into creativity second is project management and then third is having a good crew and then act is broken down into understanding your audience engaging and remarkable And then direct is broken down into highlighting your unique value proposition, a clear, specific call to action, and then being prepared for the next steps. And that is like the overarching understanding of like what the steps are. And specifically, I think what you're asking about is the first part of direct, which is highlighting your unique value proposition. And that brings me back to um, James Alfreder's book, Skip the Line. He told a great story in there about his daughter. And he, he prefaced it by saying that a lot of people try to be the best, but the better way to be the best and to stand out is to be the only. And so combining some skill that you have with something else that you're good at or you're passionate about is the best way to stand out. And his example in the book was talking about his daughter. She was a straight A student. She like did all the things that good students do, I guess the community service and all the clubs that they're in. And I'm not speaking from experience. So I'm <laughs> Me trying <either>. to... <laughs> and so she had all those, she was like applying to these prestigious schools, but there's a lot of people that look just like her that have the grades that have all the community service, everything that are applying for those schools. And she got rejected by everyone. And so he was like, well, you enjoy watching race races, don't you? Like the automobile races. And she was like, yeah, I love it. And he was like, why don't you become the only female that is applying to these schools, but is also a professional racer. And so she spent a few months doing the training, doing all that. And then she competed in a professional auto race. 
And so she, that resume stood out because she had all these qualifications that she needed. And then she also had this very unique thing that she loved doing and she combined those. So for business owners, applying this to yourself is there's, there's things that are SOPs, standard operating procedures for a reason, but beyond that is the marketing is how you stand out. And that is where you bring in your personality. Like whenever I was first getting into it, I was 24 and I was very, I was trying to compensate for my age. And like, as far as going to like being, trying to be super professional, I grew out my beard for (laughs) my page, my um, about page for that first picture that I took. And I was like doing all these things that really are not me. Like, I'm not like a very serious person most of the time. Like I like to have fun. I like to make people laugh. And so figuring out ways to combine that, like it's kind of goofy to launch 10 lemons into an 11 inch target from a slingshot. Like it is kind of goofy. It's not something that serious minded people in that sense would do like highlighting your personality because that's how you find your tribe. That's how you find people who connect to you because like, as a lot of people know, like if you're trying to niche down, if you're trying to apply to everybody, if you're trying to attract everybody, you'll attract nobody because your message is going to be like a Chinese fortune cookie. It it can apply to everyone, but you're like, ah, that can, like, you know, that that can apply to everyone. But if you're specific, if you have some sort of thing, like if you want to be the most generous person, if you want to, if you have like a charity that you really love, like giving a percentage to them for every sale, like figuring out what sets you apart, figuring out like who you truly are and applying that with the SOPs, that's how business owners can find that creative side. It's a, it's a great story uh, about the young racer, and uh, hopefully she stayed with racing and, and went on to her prestigious school, too, but she was smart enough to, to learn how to race professionally in a short period of time, probably, in order to get those applications in, and then also have fun doing it, and that's usually what helps people be successful if you're having fun doing it, and uh, I believe uh, if you're not passionate about something, about your, your, uh, your business, your job, is it harder to be profitable if you're not passionate? You don't have passion for it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, there, you can grind through the grit. You can do that. But a lot of people, like, there's a huge percentage of businesses that fail. And I think a lot of that is because of those things that we don't think about behind the scenes that we have to work on, like the boring stuff. But if you don't have a good reason why like Simon Sinek super famous for start with why mm-hmm. if you don't have that reason why you want to do something then whenever it gets to that time that you're having to go through like figure out like what's wrong with your website like why is this not happening like all these things that are not catered towards like immediate money coming back like if you don't have that passion for it, then it's going to be a lot harder to stick with it in those little times. So understanding, like having that passion, figuring out like what your unique value proposition is and applying that, I think that that makes business a lot easier. Definitely. And that you can see that in a lot of people who ju- jump into starting a business just because they think it'd be cool or, or someone else had a business, so they want to do it too, or they like drinking at a bar, so they open a bar. And it goes belly up because they're also drinking all the stuff in their bar and losing their profits that way. So it, it kind of it becomes a cycle of uh, start and lose, start and lose until you find something that you're actually passionate about to make it be, be successful. Yeah, exactly. So in your uh, in your bio, it, it says you get businesses to have content that's shared, not scrolled. You want to explain that? Yeah, so that comes kind of towards. Um, the second or the third part of act which are engaging and remarkable and so 
this is um this is where like that framework comes in like the creativity the project management figuring out what things that your audience is going to want to do and for this this is one thing to where you can look at what your industry is doing like what they're typically marketing towards what platforms are usually doing it on and figure out how you can do that in a different place because a lot of people are just in the box they're like kind of doing things that they see other people doing like i was doing with a course which there's places for that like i was talking about like the standard operating procedures for a lot of things but when it comes to marketing i think that that's a hard thing to learn how to do differently and so one thing that i recommend is looking at those platforms and figuring out how you can do it some other way like um there was a book i was reading and he was talking about how he was wanting to get an email out to his audience about a new book that he had written but he wanted to do it in a different way so he had the same platform a lot of people use but he did it the subject line was talking about how this is the only invisible email that you'll receive and the only part at the top was click on the top right and drag down and he had written it in white text so they had to highlight that they had to interact with that and that was his most clicked through email that he had in that campaign or any of his campaigns and so figuring out that medium like if it's um like he in his case the email figuring out how to do that in a different way is how people are going to want to share that because they're they're seeing that they're like probably want to send that to their friend like i have an invisible email or um things that are in person help a lot too like the kind of the activations and figuring out a way to engage people in those like dove did something where they had like a mana pits where they're like giving um girls or like ladies a manicure on their armpits and so they're trying to they're engaging them in these like weird kind of pop-up things something that people had not been doing in that way before because a lot of like the commercials i see like they're usually commercials on axe or whatever they're ones that they figured out a way to make that an in-person thing in a very populated place and so they were able to give these ladies like this experience and so then all these people were sharing that on their instagrams on all their social medias because that was something that they had bought into in a sense and so it's figuring out how to like make it more engaging instead of just the typical informational things that you'll read you'll probably think that this is this is good information this is interesting but it's kind of like everything I'm, else i'm seeing on my feed right so it looks everything looks the same it's a little something that stands out to you and and i, I think that's a, a great way to do uh, to perform your businesses and make your business successful if you have everything that looks exactly the same and I just keep going through my Google. I usually go to the third page of Google if I search something to find something that's different anyway. That's how I get my news too. Because if you go for the first two pages, you'll probably just pull your hair out by listening to two different sides of the same story that mean mean nothing to you, but it still makes you go a little crazy. But by the time you get to that third page, you just get the, the ground truth of what's going on. So you get excited and stuff. And I think that's a, a great way of looking at it. Uh, you you mentioned your book. We haven't really talked about it a lot. Uh, goal setting. Uh, when did the book come out? And uh, obviously, it's about goal setting. But it does it go in depth on how to create a goal that's work that works for the individual. Yeah. So that came out uh, about a year and a half ago, and it was about the end of October in that that year. I think twenty twenty. Okay. And it was I 
because I had that kind of network of people that I could interview and like talk to in different fields, I, I wanted to see like if there was overlap in the way that people set their goals. And so I interviewed different people like the city manager, um, different, very successful entrepreneurs, um, a singer who was very successful. So like people in different fields. And I took that and kind of synthesized what they had to say. And I also looked at, um, went through a lot of books and kind of found like different things from people's biographies and looked at different TED talks on like the, the different ways that people who obviously know a lot about it, if they're giving a TED talk on it, like how they all could work together and have those systems. And so that's kind of what I did with the book. Like I broke it down into different um, parts where the individuals were setting goals in different places and then broke those down into different habits that are common within the different sectors of life, like the health, wealth, fitness, like different, different habits that were also common. And so that, that's kind of the overarching part of the book, like the figuring out like the systems for those successful people. And uh, I'm sure the book's doing well. Where can people buy it at this time? Oh, it's on Amazon. They can just search my name or search goal setting, Nathan, okay. and that should pop up. Pop up. Okay. And they can also, I think you can go through your website as well to, to get to it. Yeah, you can get it uh, at lemonlaunch.com. And speaking of lemonlaunch.com, what are other ways people can get in contact with you to either have you on their show to talk about uh, the things we talked about or other things, or just to chat with you and maybe do some business with you? Um, they can go to Lemon Launch and then at the bottom, I have a contact me page. So that way I can find, they can find me easily and all of that information could be there. Uh, I think you referenced before your picture with your full out beard. And I think on your website, if you scroll over, it says professional me on it. So I just laughed a little bit when I was reading that. And I was like, oh, that's funny. <laughs> this is my professional <laughs> <Yeah>. picture. <laughs> yeah. well, Nathan, it's been great having you on here. What advice would you give a, a veteran that's uh, starting a business out to get their marketing campaign correct and get their goals right before they, before they launch their job, their business? Um, I would say, one thing is to look at what those SOPs are, the standing operating procedures in a lot of areas, because there, there are a lot of things that you can learn from people who have already been there and done that. And that is what I have. One of the advantages of being young is like, I'm, I know that I don't know a lot. And so I'm looking to other people to see like how they've done that kind of synthesize that information. So looking at, people who are successful in what you want to do, but also looking at the, how their lifestyle is. Like if you, if you're looking for, um, for a way to help a lot of people, then there's people that you can see that that's really what they're passionate about. And so finding out how they do that, what they go about that. And then second, I would say for the marketing, I would, there's every person has some sort of superpower and i one of my favorite quotes is every superhero has an origin story so you don't so do you you don't follow someone else's create your own masterpiece and i think that is beautiful because all of us have something incredible that we can do all of us have some kind of unique way that we can look at circumstances. And so finding out what that is and highlighting that with whatever service you're providing, that is how you really connect with people. And that is how you'll find your tribe of people you can help. Awesome. That's great advice, Nathan. And 
I like the part where you said you're, you're young enough to know that you don't know enough. And that's a lot of things that get people in their own way because they think they know everything and don't want to accept that advice or accept the other knowledge that's out there. And I think that has helped you and uh, it will propel you as you move forward in uh, your, your ventures moving forward. Uh, again, Nathan, thanks for taking some time uh, on this, uh, this night to share with us and the Misfit Nation your tips and tricks and how you became as successful as you are. Appreciate it, Rich. It was great to connect with you on here. Awesome. Thank you.